Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of the Dropship Podcast. It's John here, and today it is the solo show with John. That's right. My partner in dropshipping crime, if you like, Ben, unfortunately has COVID, and so he's not able to join us for this episode. But we want to keep bringing you the goodness, so I'm on here by myself to talk to you today. So bear with me. I'm totally got completely unused to doing this by myself. Um, I'm very used to talking, bouncing off another person on these podcast episodes. So we're going to see how this goes. So today we are talking about can you or how do you negotiate margins with suppliers? So this is a question we get really often from people who are looking to get into high ticket dropshipping or who are already doing high ticket dropshipping. Um, and one of the things about high ticket dropshipping, of course, is you're working with individual um, uh, suppliers. So we're not going to like a directory like you might with low ticket dropshipping. Like if you're going to AliExpress, you know, you're, you're just going to be buying products off there. We, we're buying products off established um, individual companies who are our suppliers. And so each one of those often is going to have different margins. And you don't really get access to those before a supplier, you get approved to work with a supplier and sell their products. Usually what happens is you are, when we, we go through and we, we talk to them and you can listen to previous episodes about how to talk to suppliers and how to call them up, but you're, you're going to ask to get approved uh, to sell their products. They say yes. And then what they do is they give you basically the price list or your price list. And that's going to have in it uh, the retail price for the products that they want you to advertise at, or they suggest you advertise at if you're outside of the US usually. And then it's going to have the price that you're going to buy the products from. And obviously one of those subtracting the other one is your margin. And every supplier can have a different margin. Now, the, the average that we see is probably around 30%, which is quite good and quite workable. But occasionally you'll have suppliers that have a lower margin than that. It might be 25%. It might be 20%. It might even be lower than that. It might be 15%. And so there is no magic number at which you should take a, you, you should onboard a supplier and start working with them. Um, and in the beginning, when you do bring in new supplies on, when you're first launching your business, you don't really know yet how, uh, what costs are involved with making those sales and getting the product to the customer. You kind of learn that stuff as you go along. And so through that learning process, sometimes you work out that, um, you know, maybe the margin that's been offered doesn't fully cover all the costs of making that sale and fulfilling that product to the customer. You know, there's costs of shipping and you might have other administrative overheads. You know, if you've got a customer service team, you've got to pay and all of that sort of thing. You've got to add all those costs together and work it out on a per sale basis. And you might say, well, for a particular suppliers I have, the margin's a little bit lower than I would like to make sales and still you know, get a decent profit from my effort in growing this business. And so the question will pop into your head, well, what can I do about that? Some people might knee jerk and say, well, I'm just going to stop selling that supplier's product, or I might just switch off ads. So I'm not paying any marketing costs for those products. And that's not actually where you should start. If you think you're struggling a little bit with your margins, the first place you should start is going and having a conversation with the supplier. So to answer the first part of the question about can you or how do you negotiate margins with suppliers, the answer is yes, you can. You absolutely can. Just not in the beginning. So you can't generally negotiate prices or, or margins with a supplier when you're first seeking their approval to sell their products. And the reason for that is, is that to them, you're kind of still a nobody. Right. Yes, you might have started an interesting business and one that they're interested in having their products on, but they don't yet know if you're actually going to do anything with that. You know, some suppliers get a lot of calls from people and some of those people are not really serious about building a business. So in the beginning, a lot of suppliers will have a little bit of caution about you and they want to actually see you go out and generate some results for them. Now, when you do generate some results for them, aka you make some sales of their products, that dynamic changes a lot and you have a lot more power in that conversation with your supplier and you have that as sort of like a lever, some leverage there. Yes, I can make sales. Yes, I can help your company make money. Now I want you to do something for me to help me. And so right at the beginning when you're first onboarding supplies is not the time to try to negotiate margins because you'll have very little luck there usually. But down the track a little bit, when you've worked out 
what it takes to sell their products, how much it costs, what your advertising costs are, what the shipping costs are, um, what your other costs might be. You can have that conversation if you feel you need to. Now, if you've got really great margins already, obviously you don't need to worry about having that conversation. It might be fine, you know, just go on running your business and enjoy the be the benefits of having those great margins. But if you've got lower margins, then when I say lower, usually I mean probably less than 20%, definitely, maybe less than 25%, you might want to have this conversation. Now, how you go about that is you want to kind of, before you jump on the phone with the supplier, you want to kind of get a bit of a, be able to paint a picture for them about why you need, you know, a better margin. And so you want to put together a little bit of work to say, put together, as I mentioned, what, what is it costing you to sell those products? So, um, you know, what's going into that sale? What's the cost of shipping? What's the cost of advertising? Because you want to go to them and be able to make a case essentially about why they should help you out. Now, obviously the reason why they should help you out is because that's going to enable you to sell more of their products. You're going to do a, be able to do a higher volume and that will be good for them. But it really helps if you can have um, a bit more meat on the bones of that as to why it's why it's going to make it easy for you to do. So if you're finding that you're selling a particular product and the cost of getting it to the customer because you're offering free shipping or maybe the cost of, you know, marketing, getting people to view that product in the first place is leaving you with very little um, cash in your pocket after you sell the product. Well, that's the conversation to have with them. Go and sit down with them and say, hey, look, we've made some sales of your products. Um, we really like them. We're enjoying having them on the site and we want to sell a lot more. But we have this issue where it's costing us this much to make the sale. And you can actually walk them through like this is the sell. This is your minimum advertised price you've given us. This is what we're buying it for. And these are the costs. So actually spell it out. For them. This is our average shipping cost. This is our average cost per sale from marketing. And that means it's leaving us with just this amount. And, and you can say to them, that's, that's making it difficult for us to find ways to do more of all of the above, more marketing, more selling your products, which we really want to do. So is there something we can do to work out a better, a better rate here, a better margin? Can we get an extra 5% in there? Well, you know, you will have an idea of what you, what you need to make it work out better for everybody. Um, and once again, always bring that back to the, the point that if we can do something more here, then we can do more for you right? So we can do more marketing. We can push your products harder. We can really get them out there and that's going to make more sales for you. So that's kind of how you have that conversation. Now that's in the scenario where you might be in the US and you've got sort of minimum advertised pricing, which, um, you know, makes, means that everybody's on a level playing field in terms of the retail price of the product. Now, if you're outside the US, like I am and, and have been for a lot of my drop shipping experience, you might be in a scenario where you don't have minimum advertised pricing, right? And so retail prices can be all over the place. And I experienced this with my first site where I was selling a particular brand and some of my compet competitors who were much larger um, established websites than I was, were actually selling the products at retail at a price that was very close to the price I was buying it for from the supplier. Now, of course, I looked at this and I, I said, well, hang on a second, how is that possible? How are they even selling at that price? Remembering, in Australia, there is no l way for a supplier to legally set a minimum advertised price. So retailers can set their own pricing. Um, and I But I was looking at it and saying, well, if they're buying it for the same price as me, how are they selling it at that price? They couldn't make a thing that they, they're not making any money here. Why, why would they be doing that? Because I can see they're paying for ads and they're doing this and that. And so I went to the supplier after a while, you know, once again, I'd made some sales for them. I'd still made some sales, even though it was hard to compete on price. Um, and I, I went to them and I said, look, I've noticed this in the market. And so I actually walked them through. I showed them some ads. I said, this person's advertising it for this much. This person's advertising it for that much. I'm buying it off you on the price that you gave me for this much. And so it's really hard for me to set my pricing in a competitive way because of what I'm seeing here. Like, can you explain to me how they're able to sell at that price when they're buying, if, if they're buying from you at the same price I am? And the supplier's response was, oh, well, essentially they're getting it at a different price than you. We, we, we had a different price tier when they signed up. And so they're getting that price. 
And I said, oh, okay. So how am I supposed to compete with them? Right? Like, so I put the ball back on them. I said, look, how, how is that actually, how do you think that is actually really going to work for me? If you want me to sell your products, how is that going to work? Um, of course, there wasn't a very good answer to that. Uh, so I said, look, I don't want an advantage in the market. I don't want you to do more for me than you do for anybody else, but I do need a level playing field. Do you have a problem with there being a level playing field? Uh, and if, if you don't have a problem, now that's a really hard question to say no to, right? Um, and so I'd say, well, let's just have a level playing field. Can you give me the same margin that they have so that I can compete in an even way with them? Because I knew in my head, that I could do the marketing better. I could do a lot of things better in that business than what those competitors were doing. The only edge they had over me, I thought, at that time was that they had they could sell at a lower retail price for me and low enough that there was a, a significant difference there in the mind of the customer. Um, and the supplier, when I went through that argument, the supplier said, yeah, okay, look, we'll, we'll put you on the same rate that they're buying from us. I did. And I went on to sell a lot more products for that supplier over time. And they were one of my main suppliers the, the whole way through my running of that first business until I sold it. So that's how essentially how you go about it. And really what I'm getting to here is, you know, your supplier is your partner in business, really. You have a partnership with them, which is a mutually beneficial partnership. You're making money from selling their products, or you should be. They're making money from selling you their products or they should be, right? And so when both of those two things happen, it's a mutually beneficial partnership. And so you should approach that conversation in the same way that you would approach a conversation with any partner. Just get to the point, say what you have to say, have, have good, well thought out reasons why you're asking for something. Don't be unrealistic. Don't, I mean, if your margin's 25%, don't go into that conversation and immediately demand 40% margins, right? That's a massive jump. You're not gonna get that. That's unreasonable. Start by saying, well, can we bump it up by 5% or 10%? That's, you know, like, can we go from 15 to 20? Or can we go from 20 to 25 or something like that? Work on it gradually. Make some improvements over time and that will help you. So be realistic, be open, be honest. Explain to them the costs involved with selling their products. Don't try and hide anything. And if, if you can do that, then you're going to get a lot further with that conversation. So if you're sitting there and you're like, and you've started a business, uh, a high ticket dropshipping business, you've got supplies and you're sitting there thinking, well, some of these margins aren't really great. Then just know, get out there and start having those, make some sales for those supplies if you haven't already. Get out there and have that conversation with them. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by the outcomes you get. And definitely that's always the first step with those products. Don't just knee jerk and switch off your ads or, not bring them on board or, or whatever it might be. Always bring a supplier with lower margins, particularly if their products look good in the market, right? So sometimes I hear people say, well, I, I got approved with the supplier, but then I looked at the margins and oh, I, I don't really like it, but their products look like, look good. Like they're, they're, they look like they're real, really well-regarded products in that market and I want to sell them. Well, sell them with the knowledge that, even if you break even in the beginning selling them, that's okay because what you're doing is you're building up a, a relationship with and a history with that supplier that you're going to be able to leverage into better margins down the track. And so it is well worth your while to sell those products at that lower margin as long as you're not you know, losing hideous amounts of money. In the long run, it's going to play out. And remember, we're in this business for the long run, not the short term. So... With that, I'll leave you with that uh, little thought, but please, I encourage you to go out and have those conversations with your suppliers.